So I had a little bit of time, a little bit of a break yesterday. And um, I decided to pull out my 2547 that I originally had put on my website and kind of said some not so nice things about it because I don't know, I just maybe never gave it a, I guess, a, enough chance. And uh, it's kind of grown on me after I went through and did the the complete alignment on it again. I'd done one a long time ago when I got it. And I used it quite a bit for you know, some time. But um, anyhow, the thing that really bothered me with this radio the most is basically this frequency counter really isn't a frequency counter it's just a display and I really feel like it does not need the six digit because no matter what you do to align the radio this constantly moves and I mean it moves very fast and you can see as I move the clarifier now this is an open and unlock but and it doesn't slide that far. I know there's a mod that you can do to make it slide farther, and that really doesn't matter to me. But everybody comes in crystal clear right at 12 o'clock. So I talked to my friend Grease Monkey for shoot about an hour yesterday on this thing. And he was on an Aries too, sounding fantastic. And he said it sounded pretty good. You know, he was saying it sounded pretty good. So, and I, he recorded me and sent me a video, and I, I kind of heard it. It's like, man, you know, it's not too bad. So, long story short, here is sometimes you don't know what you have until you go back through it, check it out realign the thing and just sit here and kind of use it so what I'm saying is I actually kind of like it and since we don't have really any real base stations on the market anymore for for like CB this is about as good as it gets now, of course you can say you know the high power version of this which is what what do they call it the 29 something another HP Ranger that looks very similar um, It's not a CB for how I look at things You know president doesn't make a base CB Texas Ranger doesn't make a base CB they did at one time they had the uh, Was it the 696 or something it had the big black rack mount handle and it was one of those type of radios It had WX and stuff That's one thing. I wish this had was the WX band I feel like they could have added it somewhere. Maybe get rid of this. I don't really need a 9 and 19, but... I actually don't mind this radio. And I literally just turned it on. And started recording. And it, it sits pretty stable, so... It's not as bad, I think, as, as what I thought. <clears throat> and so I took it off my site because I decided I'm going to keep it. And... Um, you know, it's it's not anything about, you know, what was done to it or anything like that. All that is top-notch. So, it's got a P5, P6. It's got a Ranger Echo board. It's got a white LED here. All that stuff works great. It's it's all top-notch. It was installed the right way and, and everything. So, it's just me and my personal preferences sometimes are a little too much. The one thing, though, that I was having a problem with was this kept flaking out. And you can see now it's not doing that. It's working just the way it should. So the fix to that was um, obviously take all the covers off of it, top and bottom, and flip it over so that the bottom is exposed so you can see that channel selector housing. And then take a drill, and I'll show you what I did. I took the drill, this bit right here, and just drilled into the... Um, I don't know what you call it, but the housing, the channel selector is here. If you look inside on the bottom, you'll see the housing. And you can look on any mobile radio and see the same housing. 
and I drilled a small hole in so I could expose the interior of it. And then I took some of this, a few drops in there, and kind of worked the channel selector. And lo and behold, it stopped flaking out where I would see like segments going out and it would flicker and it would completely go out. And now it's working. So now it's working and uh, that's an interesting one there. Is that South America maybe? I don't know. That's AM. So this antenna that I'm using, and that's why I'm saying that kind of bothers me still, but there's nothing I can physically do about that. Um, the only thing I thought about maybe trying to do is literally remove the connection to that six digit because I absolutely hate that. This would be an awesome radio that didn't have that six digit and I mean yeah I can we can play with the clarifier and stuff and make it go back to zero but that just it's one of the pet peeves I have don't give me something if it's just going to sit here and fluctuate because it's totally unnecessary to have a six digit here and some might say well if you do sideband you need to have the six digit no you don't because sideband for CB is so basic no matter if the guy's off frequency or not that's what this is for and if it was in a locked configuration and I almost kind of wish that I would have kept it locked but I could go back in and, and redo it and make it locked up, locked down, and then I could realign the radio again and do it the right way so that it's always on reception only here. As you can see, I mean, I can't slide very far, so, and I don't care about going to the zeros or any of that stuff on this radio anyway, so that might be something I might look into later is just putting the clarifier back to factory. And trying to learn how to use the radio and just realign the radio for the factory way so that way it um you know use it the way it was designed but i've also under the opinion that these do have a little drift here and there and being able to move the clarifier and, and, and compensate the drift does kind of help so i still like it locked when you're talking to somebody that's on a perfectly spot on frequency radio it doesn't matter then you just tune to them and if they're right there uh, grease monkey was right at 12 i didn't have to touch it so and that tells me based on what i see on my equipment and also what i see by talking to him that it, it, it doesn't need anything else so i'm probably just going to leave it but if i was gonna if i was going to do anything else to the radio i might try to reinstall the clarifier back to the original form um otherwise i mean it's a, it's a fun radio the Echo actually sounds really good in the, in the setting that it's at now. It's one of those Ranger, I don't know what model it is, but it sounds good. There's a tone adjustment on the Echo and also a volume. I find that the volume, I put it up pretty much the whole way and I put the tone about mid-level. And uh, I don't know, it's just it. It's one of these radios, I think one day they won't make them anymore. And it'll kind of be nostalgic. Some might say they'd rather have like a, a unit in Washington or a Cobra 2000 or a Madison or a, I don't know, anything else that was older. And I have that, like I say, I have that unit in Washington here new in the box, but I don't know, something about this, just it has more stuff going on. And I'd be hard pressed to probably replace this with that Washington if I was going to use this daily. And I think I might, I might just literally put this in line and this might go over on the other side of the desk that you guys don't really ever see and i might just use this bad boy just the way it is so i don't know i haven't made that decision yet but i'm really glad honestly that nobody bought it and probably nobody bought it because i said some not so nice things about it in the description but at the time i was just kind of mad about it um and, and again i wasn't mad about the work that was done with this or the the channels which are on the back it's uh p5 p6 you know and it works good i was just kind of mad about the overall how the radio worked regardless you know the design with the drift and stuff but i never really fully gave it my full attention to go through and do the the real alignment and i have to tell you that this new spectrum analyzer does a lot more than 
what meets the eye. I mean, I can align the frequency of a radio just looking at the spectrum analyzer. I don't even have to turn my frequency counter on. I actually would never want to use it again to do, do an alignment on a radio based on what this does for me. So it's just flat out awesome. But uh, that's pretty much it. I don't want to take up too much time. I've probably spent too much time on this video already. But um, yeah, it's a really cool radio. Um, the one thing that would not want me to get the high power Ranger one would be I've heard some not so nice things about the power supply that they come come with that they don't last and that they end up going out and also uh, I've never had a good situation with a high power Ranger where they don't just look really bad on the spectrum analyzer I mean this looks really good because it's a low power CB radio um, it, it's not doing that much power so let's let's go here really quick and just kind of take a look at the power so again I'm running the mic here but uh, we'll come over here to the um, the operating side where I have another LP 100A so uh, let's put this over into so it's dedicating a little over five almost five watts so, and then when we modulate, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, check one, two, one, two, three. So it's not, it's not a real high power radio or anything, but it's doing okay. So that's, that's with it up all the way. And then this is with the RF power all the way down. It picks up that pop from the mic. About two watts all the way down. And then quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of swing from it all the way down, so... You know the rangers have a lot of am mod and i set the the level this is actually about 93 percent with the tone and with it all the way up it was about 96 with the tone the rangers are again very forgiving on the amc so you know, you're going to get that higher carrier to peak ratio that a lot of guys want and then here is ssb so on ssb it's doing more than the 12 and I'll be honest um, it's really hard to get a good waveform out of these based on the fact that you have to have the right tone combination they don't really like the standard tones that I would use on other radios so you know it, it's kind of real it's real finicky about that I don't know why that the normal tones don't really respond too well with the audio circuit of these radios but it, it kind of is what it is but so you can see it's doing anywhere from 12 to 20 watts or something. So it's not it's not doing a ton of power. And then if we turn the power all the way down, power all the way down, it's more like 10 watts, 10, 15 watts. So sometimes a little less. So it does work. The RF power works and stuff. But it's just kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a fun radio. So is it the best radio ever? Uh, absolutely not. But... Personally, I think I'd rather have this one than that high power Ranger based on what I know with all the spurious emissions and stuff with that with the amp sections and those radios and stuff. And I think this radio, even though it's more basic in the sense that, you know, the power and you have to you have to do the P5, P6 and all that to get it to go out of the bands and stuff. And I don't think it'll do like. I don't know what the, the base Ranger does, if it does 12 and 10 or whatever it does, but this won't do 10. I mean, maybe you could modify it more to make it do 10, but I would use this as a CB as it's intended to be used, and, and I think it would be fun. So, again, that's just my thoughts on a radio that I had sitting around collecting dust over on the shelf for quite some time, and um, I'm really glad that I hung on to it. But I also still hate this this six digit, so... I thought about not instead of not going through all the trouble and trying to disconnect this, just literally put like a, you know, like on cars that we used to do back in the day when when lights would come on and we didn't want to get it fixed or anything, we just stick a piece of black tape. Literally, just take a nice piece of black tape and just cover that up, and then not pay it any mind. <laughs> all right, seventy three. Have fun out there.